All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. If you'd like, um, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat and let us know what major you're thinking about pursuing so that um, our lovely panelists can um, know. And then, Lori, would you like to start our introduction? Sure. Sure, welcome. Welcome, students and faculty and advisors. Um, we're happy to have you here at a Transfer Tuesday UH Manoa Transfer Webinar Series. Um, really quickly, I'd like to introduce um, three of us. Um, Amy McKee, who's our UH Manoa KEAEA specialist, who's assigned to Leeward. Um, Jordan Luton, who's our Leeward Community College online counselor. And I'm Laurie, and I'm also a Leeward Community College counselor. And we're delighted today because we have two very special guests. Um, so they felt they're from the beautiful UH Manoa. Um, mm -hmm. Wendy Kawabata, who's a professor of art and associate chair from the art, representing the art and art history department. And later we'll have Brittany Biggs, who's an assistant professor of animation from UH Manoa. So we will go ahead and get started. And before we do, I just, I'm going to have um, Amy speak a little bit about UH Manoa. Thanks so much, Lori. And mahalo to everybody for joining us today. We are um, so excited to have you here with us and excited to share some information about UH Manoa. So some fun facts about UH Manoa. Um, this campus was founded in 1907 and is considered a land, sea, space, and sun grant institution. We offer over 100 undergraduate degrees for students to choose from, as well as many graduate and professional degrees, including law, medicine, business, education, social work, and engineering. We are the flagship campus in the University of Hawaii system and have the highly ranked Research One institution, an NCAA Division I school, and we strive towards being a native Hawaiian place of learning. If you are thinking about transferring to UH Manoa within the next one to two years, we'd love for you to consider joining the KEAEA program. The Ka'iaia program is a partnership between UH Manoa and the community colleges. And we have transfer specialists at each of the community colleges who can help students transfer smoothly and effectively to UH Manoa. We also provide proactive academic advising. We waive the application fee and tuition deposit. You have the option to take UH Manoa classes if you would like to. And we give students the ability to register early when they do start at Manoa. This program is free to join and is open to any UH community college student who has at least 24 transfer credits earned or in progress, at least a 2.0 GPA, and you must have, have at least one more semester remaining at your community college before transferring. So if you're interested in joining the program, please let me know in the chat and I'll go ahead and drop the link. So we'll go ahead and transition to another gem. ACM at UH Manoa. So Brittany, you can go ahead and start. Thank you. Hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Brittany Biggs. I'm an assistant professor of animation at the Academy for Creative Media here at UH Manoa. So um, I'm also gonna go ahead and share my screen. And hopefully you can see that okay. Let me pull up all my videos. Everything always gets hidden when you share. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of jump between our website and just this little slideshow that I put together. But all this content is absolutely available on our website. So if you just type in acm.hawaii.edu, you can access on our homepage that has all the things that you need about faculty and staff, the different tracks that we uh, offer, our social media and news, our student films, et cetera. So I'll touch on all this in a moment. Um, so basically to start, ACM is Hawaii's film school. We are at the forefront of cinematic arts in the Pacific. We offer a Bachelor of Arts degree in three tracks, creative media, animation, and digital cinema, which are designed to encourage innovation and collaboration with an emphasis on Hawaii, the Pacific, and Asia. We encourage professional development, mentorship, and community engagement through a variety of programs, including internships, master classes, and industry screenings such as at uh, HIP, Hawaii International Film Festival. So, you know, we try to invite industry professionals to speak. Um, for instance, we had Peter Ramsey, who is the co-director on the Academy Award-winning film, Spider-Man Spider-Verse. He came and visited us, luckily before the whole pandemic happened, but he came in fall of 2019. Um, the following semester, right before the pandemic shut everything down, we were lucky to have um, Stevie Carter, who is a 
director of um, development at, or like a development executive at Netflix Animation, as well as Dave Harden, who is a lead um, character animator at Disney Animation. They came out in February, right before everything shut down. Um, in the past, we've had Taika Waititi. Um, so we definitely try to get students involved and engaged with um, professionals in the industry, kind of hearing how they got into the, into the industry and their career path. For internships, we have a lot of students who work with uh, local productions, for instance, Magnum PI, um, Hawaii Five-O, and uh, we also try to get students involved, especially like animation students. They've been doing a lot of work with various uh, departments through the university. So we've had students do internships with um, Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology, helping create animations that help visualize some of the work that the scientists over there are doing. Um, we currently have a number of interns who are helping with the Department of Anatomy. So they're helping create um, visualizations of anatomical structures that kind of help visualize how these different parts of you know, your anatomy move and function. Um, we also have had uh, internships with um, HART and we are currently in the process of doing something with um, sustainable coastlines. So we try to encourage a lot of also local internships as well. Um, and then we definitely have had a number of students uh, share their films, their short films at HIF. We actually even do have an ACM night where we have an ACM showcase of all of our films. So just to talk about our mission statement, um, what our goal is at, with this uh, program. So ACM nurtures and empowers students to develop their own unique voices as storytellers, exploring creative media forms rooted in personal experience and place-based learning through animation, critical studies, digital cinema, and screenwriting. So it's very important for us that our students understand filmmaking and that they can use filmmaking and creating, whether it's through animation or live action, um, but they can use that to amplify their voices and their personal stories. So that's especially very important to us. Um, in terms of who ACM students are, we kind of define that as um, ACM students are driven by a boundless curiosity. Um, they collaborate and support each other in their creative endeavors and conduct themselves in a respectful and professional manner. ACM students create stories for the screen rooted in diversity and personal identity. These films offer windows into their communities, cultures, beliefs, and experiences. Whether on set or in the classroom, ACM students embody the values and ethics of emerging artists and scholars who aspire to educate, challenge, and entertain audience through their work. So as I mentioned, we do offer three different tracks um, for our Bachelor of Arts degree. The first track that all ACM majors will enter when they first um, declare their major with ACM is creative media. So this is basically a central track and it's gonna provide a strong foundation in cinema history, cultural, culture, storytelling, and cinematic production. So what's also really nice about this track is that students can dabble in both digital cinema and animation, but they can also focus on other areas such as producing or screenwriting or media studies, critical studies. And then they can also kind of hone in and kind of create almost their own um, mini specialty within this creative media track. And then for animation, that focus is, of course, using the art of animation um, for storytelling. So students can explore traditional, experimental, and computer animation techniques to support their films. And digital cinema students, again, they focus on all aspects of filmmaking. So from concept to creation, screenwriting, directing, producing, cinematography, editing, and post-production sound. Um, so all of our students, uh, in doing production work. They are always taught using industry standard film equipment and software. So I, our students are using um, Sony and Ari Alexa cameras. They are using um, Avid Pro Tools. And then in terms of animation, they're using industry standards like Maya, which is the 3D animation software package, um, Toon Boom Harmony Premium, which is more for like the 2D digital um, workflows. Storyboard Pro for storyboarding. And we're also really excited to um, soon be incorporating Unreal uh, into our curriculum as well. And all that Unreal is doing with virtual production. So that's extremely exciting. So I'm actually gonna jump over to our website. So basically everything I just covered, that's on this um, homepage. So you can certainly see um, who our faculty and staff are and what their 
specific areas of spe specialties are. Um, and then in terms of the tracks, you can kind of get an understanding, like I mentioned, the kind of basic overview of each track. And then if you want to learn a little bit more about that, I would recommend going over to uh, the track requirements. So um, this will allow you to kind of dig deeper to see exactly what courses you would be taking and then your options of your different track elective courses that you can take. And at the bottom of these, there's always a link to our course descriptions that gives even further details about each course. Um, and that's for creative media, animation, and also digital cinema. And also, if you just scroll to the very top, this student info page is definitely a great spot for all of our students to check out. So the very first step tells you and walks you through how you can become an ACM major. So this is especially applicable for you as transfer students. So the first step is just visiting the website, um, manoahawaii.edu admissions, begin the application process, choose your correct application type for you guys, it would be that transfer student. And then on that step three, you would choose creative media BA as your planned course of study. So that's just the first step. And then the second step is once you are a major, then you can kind of decide between the three tracks. So again, all incoming students enter in that main creative media track. But if you would like to focus on animation or digital cinema, then you will need to submit a portfolio. Of course, you will be taking some of the introductory courses to kind of get your feet wet and allow you to prepare a portfolio for submission. And um, for portfolios, they are due twice a year. So either March 1st or October 1st. And in terms of the requirements for the portfolios, that's also here on this page underneath all of this information. So for animation, it kind of walks through all the requirements as well as digital cinema requirements and a link where you can actually upload and submit your portfolio. Um, the only other thing I'd like to mention is that students are allowed to apply for either digital cinema or animation track twice. So if a student applies twice and they're not accepted, then they will just continue to remain in the, in the main creative media track. And again, they can take uh, production courses in either animation or digital cinema, um, but majority for those production courses will go to those in that track. Um, let's see. So yeah, only animation and digital tracks uh, would apply for portfolios. So some recommendations for you guys as transfer students. Um, we highly recommend that, especially while you're at um, the community college, is really focusing on taking your gen ed courses. A lot of our ACM courses are these upper division um, course, courses. So the more that you can get through of your gen ed, that will allow you to really, really focus in on your ACM degree. So definitely encourage you to take, focus on your gen ed, especially focus on your writing requirements. That'll definitely come in handy and help you be prepared as you are taking the screenwriting classes. Um, we definitely encourage you to take um, some, check out the art courses, including Art 113, especially if you're interested in pursuing the animation track, that is gonna be a prerequisite requirement. So we recommend that you take that at your community college. Of course, we have that offered here as well, if, if you need. Um, but yes, like I said, that will really allow you to really focus in and depending on how much you get through, you know, you could theoretically complete your ACM degree in two years, as long as you've already completed that other gen ed work. Um, I wouldn't mind taking a moment just to play a little bit of our work. Um, and of course, you know, I definitely want to save some time for questions. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I kind of wanted to point out. Oh, okay. Also on the student info, there's equipment requirements. Um, we do require students to have a laptop computer. Of course, we have a computer lab for students to use as well. But um, especially with the amount of work you'll be doing in terms of your animation work and your digital cinema work, it always helps to have your own uh, laptop as well to complete your assignments. So we have all the different recommendations on here. Um, handbooks and forms. So you can check out um, the student handbook. All of our learning outcomes are, are listed here and the different student organizations that you can get involved with. Um, okay, I will go ahead and play at least a little bit of this. So this will be um, a combination of our animation and digital cinema student work. So.
you guys see that okay? A po ho kai, a ulu kupu kupu, a ulu lau po ole. Hello, traveler. It is I, the great Gangrene. A word of caution, traveler. Never, ever open a chest. Like, who even uses those anymore? Wait, wait, no. You know, teach them about it before they go out there and try it on your own. That's what I say, you know? That's what I do with my kids, and they're not drug addicts. So thank God for that, you know? They might not want to be around no more, but hey, you know, it's probably better I'm not around. Yes, with that, the box pops open. It has 900 gold pieces inside. Yeah! I get it. Way to persevere. I, we can't take these. This is... This nope, is totally can.
clothes on cool. there. And then I wanted to share one more little reel. So this is of some of the 3D character animation work that's completed um, in the ACM 316B 3D character animation course. So this little, little competition. I eat breakfast 300 yards from 4,000 Cubans who are trained to kill me. So don't think for one second that you can come down here, flash a badge, and make me nervous. Sam, what's the fastest way out of here? Jetpack! Do you actually have a jetpack? No! What? Was she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on, and yet within a month! So this kind of shows how students will use reference to help support uh, their performances. You don't mind i'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed or worse expelled all right i eat breakfast um, three so those were the main things i was going to cover um but i know just uh we have some other things i wanted to share is uh in terms of our alumni some of the fun stories of alumni we had um chris yogi uh his feature film i was a simple man uh premiered in sundance this year um in the u.s dramatic competition and then uh we also have another uh Alumni Erin Lau, she's a writer, director, and producer with Jubilee Films in LA. We have um, a previous student alumni, Jen Nagita, she's now a Pixar animator, character animator. Um, Nak Young Choi, Disney concept artist. Uh, Aina Paikai, uh, he made a film down on the sidewalk in Waikiki, premiered in HIF. Um, it's now actually being, you can actually stream it, it's available on the Criterion channel. So that's quite an accomplishment. Um, our recent alumni, Gavin Alukan, he is a story artist on a web series called Hell of a Boss. We have numerous students who are also just freelance and um, doing freelance work. And let's see, uh, definitely a lot of our students will move on to um, MFA programs, um, going to places like USC and Chapman, uh, those film schools, and then definitely in uh, a lot of students go on to work on productions and on set here in Hawaii on projects like Magnum PI. Um, also Nella Media Group, there are some of our students have gone on to continue working at that studio. Uh, Hawaii Media Inc, which is a rental house. Um, and yeah, so definitely some really exciting stuff that our uh, alumni have gone on to pursue. And yeah, I think at this point, maybe I can just open up for any questions that you guys might have. That's great, Brittany. Thank you so much for that overview. Um, it looks like uh, Lori popped a question into the chat about um, sharing the difference between the CM track and the digital cinema track. 
So the creative media track versus digital cinema? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So um, there's going to be overlaps for sure, but um, so the creative media track that is more generalized. So you will still have the same kind of foundation. You have the choice. All students have to take ECM 255 Introduction to Cinema and Digital Media. All, all students have to take screenwriting and three different uh, critical studies courses, such as Indigenous Aesthetics, Topics in Creative Media, and that will kind of depend on who's teaching it and what specific topic the course is going to be on. But some examples could be sustainability in the motion picture industry, uh, history of animation, and then ethics in film. Um, so for creative media track majors, they have uh, they can choose between taking ACM 215, which is an introduction to 3D computer animation, um, or ACM 315, uh, 310, which is cinematic narrative production. And those are kind of both requirements, whether you decide to take um, or pursue the digital cinema track or the animation track. Um, so they can get some exposure in the creative media track in this way. And then the other required courses that students in the creative media track must take are independent producing, and then some additional uh, critical um, studies courses like genre and narrative theory, authors in creative media, and the American documentary. And then they have a choice of four courses that they can take, whether it's um, continuing in the digital cinema production track or animation. So with the creative media track, you are being able to kind of take a taste and sample from the different animation and digital cinema tracks. And then you could even kind of hone in on like a specific area you might want to focus on. So perhaps it's more focusing on screenwriting. So you could have take advanced screenwriting courses. Uh, for the first time, I believe in the fall, we are offering a feature screenwriting class for the first time. And then for the digital cinema track, this is going to be much more focused and honed in on digital, digital, digital cinema filmmaking. Um, so you are definitely um, learning the whole process from um, concept to completion. So writing, directing, producing, um, cinematography, editing, sound. So you're definitely doing a lot more of like the technical and filmmaking aspects of that. But still, you're learning um, some of that history and the, and um, critical theory um, that will help you, of course, hone your skills as you are making your own films. I hope that answers your question. Well, yes, thank you. Yes, that's super helpful. Thank you. Yes. Brittany, this might be a silly question, but um, you mentioned that students go on to film school. Mm -hmm. um, is film school like grad school? Oh, sorry. <laughs> like so, a student would go on. Yeah, we certainly, I mean, we are a film school, of course, ourselves, but we only offer at this time a BA. So students who are wishing to pursue a master's or an MFA, um, they will have to, unfortunately for now, go, you know, off island and, and find that. That is something that we uh, do anticipate in the future, um, creating an MFA program. Um, but for now, yes, uh, our students would have to go to for like for instance, like USC or Chapman or any of those big film schools uh, for their masters. And of course, just in case any students, because I know there are definitely also students who are interested in teaching one day at the university level. And typically that MFA is that um, terminal degree that's required, yeah. Thank you for clarifying, just wanted to make sure. Yes, absolutely. Um, also, just based on some of the questions I know that Wendy received, in terms of students who might be double majoring, we do have a lot of collaborations with other departments. So we certainly have students who double major with the art department or, um, or do a minor. We do not at this time offer minors in ACM, so it would have to be you know, a double major or, or a minor in another department. Um, we have also have a lot of cross collaboration with the ICS, the computer science department. So especially um, for in the animation track, courses like um, game design and development, that's cross listed with ICS, um, as well as data visualization and virtual and augmented reality. Um, yeah, I think those are like the, the big kind of cross listed ones. I know we also have, I think have some cross listed courses with for critical studies um, film courses with the history department, um, American studies. 
Can you kind of compare and contrast um, your creative media with the creative media program at UH West Oahu? Sure. So um, the UH West Oahu program, at least my understanding is they're more focused on transmedia. And so transmedia is, I'll do my best in defining this. It's kind of similar to franchising, but not really. It's basically like a really good example would be Marvel Cinematic Universe. So with that whole entire project, that whole world building that they've created, they can tell stories through film, through comic books, through video games, and all of that content. You can continue to learn about a character and have another storyline in these different types of media. And whereas our focus is on film production. Thank you for clarifying. I get a lot of questions from students about which, which way. Um, and I'm assuming most of the classes that you guys host at UH Manoa are, will be in person. Um, so we, right now, like since the pandemic, all the animation courses have been completely online. Um, that is, you know, when you look at actually even the, the film industry right now, animation is still booming and thriving because that can easily be done just on your computer, right? That's really all you need. Um, and so one thing that's been really nice is that we have enabled um, VPN so that students can VPN into our computer lab to utilize those machines if they need to. Um, now, in terms of the production courses, they have been more hybrid, yes. So there, there is that kind of hybrid component where it's smaller groups and we have very, very strict COVID regulations for all the different crews. Um, and I think, I, would, I think even on the slides, I have some recent images of students who are shooting, you know, with their, their masks and, you know, students get creative with including masks in their films. So, you know, we're making it work the best we can. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I caught that on the, those previous slides too. I was like, oh, that must be recent. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, Amy, do you guys have any questions? Um, I, I did have one question, you know how, um, for Brittany, you know how Wendy was sort of sharing about graphic design is a little bit more competitive, particularly pre-COVID. Is there um, a competitive track or is it very competitive to get in ACM? Um, to get into the major itself, no, you can simply declare the major and you're automatically in that creative media track. Um, the competitiveness might come, of course, with the portfolio requirements that are needed to enter the animation or the digital cinema tracks. And the reason for that is we wanna be able to make sure that our classes can remain small on um, these production courses so that we have a lot more, um, you know, smaller classes, you know, better ratio between the students and instructor. Um, so we try to keep those courses, right now they're anywhere from 18 to 20 and we're even trying to like bring that number down a little bit smaller. So the different cohorts that are created um, with each kind of portfolio cycle, you know, it would be anywhere from, um, I guess like 18 to 20 students at a time. Um, in the past animation, like especially those core classes, we've only been able to offer them once a year instead of every semester. But the good news is we will be able to start offering um, those courses every semester, so that's very exciting. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely encourage students to take those kind of introductory courses. We certainly don't expect a student to just enter into the creative media track and just submit a portfolio. No, we, we certainly want you to take some of these intro, intro courses like ACM 215 and 216 for animation and also um, ACM 310 for digital cinema so that you have the, the coursework from those classes that you can use for your portfolio. And of course, animation students, they have to take Art 113. And so that can also be really good material as well. And we highly encourage students to take um, more advanced courses, uh, like 200, 300 level, like 314, Art 314, for instance, it's a fantastic life drawing um, and gesture drawing course that we really encourage students to take as well. Thank you. And speaking of Art 113, thank you for having that um, slide on recommendations for transfer yeah. students that was helpful yeah that's the biggest um the biggest thing that i can think of in terms of recommendations because yeah as as much as you can get through your gen ed that will really allow you to focus on um only taking acm courses and like i said that could allow you to 
potentially even get your degree in two years mm -hmm. after, of course, your time at the community colleges. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brittany, I have a question about um, the programs again. Um, so I know Leeward does have like a digital media track. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, and then do any of those courses transfer into Manoa or is there any talk about developing an articulation agreement? Oh, yes, we are literally right now in the midst of articulation agreements. Um, I even was contemplating whether to bring that up because I didn't want that to confuse students who are thinking about transferring because of course you can still transfer right now even without any kind of articulation agreement. Mm -hmm. But we that is definitely in the works right now. Um, and yes, you're correct. There are creative media programs at the different community colleges. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the goal is to make sure that we can have those courses transfer over, especially um, for some of the like ACM 255 um, and in those animation courses like 215, 216. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so the goal to, so like I said, we're in the midst right now. So the goal would be that they would be in place for next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For any students on this call, if you currently need ACM 255 or want to do that over the summer, join the EAEA program. So we can help facilitate that for you. Sorry, shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> I can stop sharing my screen. Sorry, that'll probably make it a lot easier. <laughs> um, I have another question for both Brittany and for Wendy. Um, can you folks talk about any scholarship opportunities for students who are planning to apply for your majors? Do you want to go first or do you um, want me to go first? <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a number of uh, scholarships. I actually, if it, just one second here, I will pull up the list. I can't share because it does have personal, you know, I can't share my screen. Uh, but we, um, we have a Rad, Yoko Radke um, photo scholarship, the Helen Gilbert Bushnell Memorial, Award, um, the we have a printmaking award, a Lipshire award that is a focus in fiber arts, and that goes to either graduates or undergraduates. Um, there's a Pilchuck Partnership Award for um, Glass students to be able to um, study at Pilchuck Glass Studio in Washington. We have two different uh, an award and a scholarship for that. Um, there's a Glass Fellowship. Uh, there's a Mary Tudor Scholarship Endowment, Diane Sullivan Scholarship Fund, Kelly Cow Memorial Scholarship Fund, uh, the John Heidi Fellowship and Art Fund, the Charlotte Foundation Scholarship Fund. And all of those are accessible through the um, one scholarship application uh, portal. So if you search in that portal keyword art, all of these will come up. You'll also get some that are in music and dance and theater um, and some ACM, but it typically will um, specify in the details what is specifically for art majors. And um, similarly, you can also, there are lots of also undergraduate scholarships, of course, that a lot of our students apply for in ACM. And then specific ACM wise, we have um, some different funds, uh, <coughs> fund, which is to support um, students who are pursuing films that are based in Hawaiian or indigenous language and uh, for our capstone projects. So basically um, students in the digital cinema track they can take ACM 410, which is advanced cinematic production, and students in the animation track would be taking ACM 420, which is animation production two. So those two courses already kind of act as like a capstone course in a way, but there is also a capstone, an official capstone course, um, ACM 486, that students will pitch for, and if they are accepted into the course, um, typically we also have some funds to support those productions. And, and I would just add, you know, go ahead and apply for these things. Um, 
uh, not enough students ever apply. I mean, students apply, but we have almost 400 majors and there's nowhere near, you know, a handful of students apply. And it's great support that's available for you. Oh, also, Wendy, there was something that you mentioned um, that is something we highly encourage our students to apply for. And many have applied and many have been successful. And that's the UROP funding. So that's the undergraduate research opportunities. So, of course, you know, that supports any undergraduate project. And I think traditionally people think in more sciences um, STEM, but there is definitely uh, funding for humanities and arts. And so we have had students who, so for individual projects, um, proposals, students can get up to $5,000. And then for teams of, I think it's just two or more, or maybe it's a group of three, if you can get, sorry? I think it can be more than that. Okay, yeah. So at least two or more, you can get funding for up to $10,000 per group project. And so we've definitely had students um, apply and successfully be awarded this funding. And that really helps in terms of their film production. So I think a lot of times students don't really think about that being in like a humanities um, college, but no, there's definitely great funding there. Yeah, and we, we want our students to, to take advantage of that. And so if you are ever wondering about that, you can contact um, me. And you can also, you know, all of our faculty, and I'm, I know the same goes for ACM, they're aware of that fund and um, would be happy to help you put together an application, a proposal. We've had uh, groups of students go uh, get funding to go to conferences. Mm -hmm. um, either to participate or um, present or, it, well, present, but also be able to attend the whole conference for the Southern Graphics Arts Council and the College Art Association. And we've had students who are BFA students um, and they want to take on an ambitious project that's going to cost a bit of money for the capstone, apply for the Europe, and then they're able to incorporate that funding and be more ambitious um, and what they want to take on. Wow, that is amazing. Thank you for sharing those opportunities with us. It looks great on your resume too. Mm -hmm. Yes, very much. Because mm -hmm. every time you apply for something, it, it, it sort of, um, you know, you get that first scholarship or you get that first award, the next one you apply for, you've got, you know, someone showed faith in you previously. Mm -hmm. So it's under your belt and that's how that helps you build a career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And also I feel like it shows that, um, you know, you have, you've written one good application and just like exactly. keep building off of that with your next application. Okay. Jordan, Lori, do you guys have any other questions? I think. Yeah, I feel like you folks have covered like a lot of the questions we usually ask. So, thank you so much for sharing such comprehensive presentations with us and um, sharing with us your resources and knowledge. Thanks. Thank you for having us. Great to see you all. Yeah. I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Cool. Why don't I close this out then? Um, oh wait, oops. Put the headphone too much. <laughs> so thank you so much to our students uh, and faculty for joining us today for our Transfer Tuesday webinar. Um, please join us again at the end of the month, March 30th, where we'll, we'll be having the um, journalism department as well as communicology department talk with us about their majors. Hope everybody has a great day. Aloha. Great. Aloha. Thank you.